Hey, hey everybody, I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com and today I'm going to show you how to make your very own animated mats in Adobe Premiere Pro. That's right, animated mats, also referred to as track mats, we call ours style mats. It's just basically fancy terms for ways to stylize your footage. These are just shapes that you plug your footage right into and you can instantly stylize your footage. You know, maybe dress it up a little bit, maybe make it a little bit more interesting. You see this all the time, especially if you've got like maybe gnarly B-roll that doesn't match or you're just trying to, you know, add some visual interest to the scene. You see this in TV shows and feature films and commercials, uh, wedding videos all the time. Um, you see it on reality shows all the time. America's Got Talent uses this quite a bit when they're cutting to and from the teams that are competing or the people that are competing. And of course, uh, we just saw this on the last uh, season of uh, Project Runway, which is really great to see this stuff. Uh, it actually, they ended up using our style mats and uh, make it work to thunders. It was awesome. And I'm gonna show you how to do this all on your own. Uh, before you say anything, yes, I am in Premiere Pro CC 2017. I use the always use the best and the latest uh, for these tutorials when I can. It doesn't matter uh, for these uh, methods. I'm going to show you a ton of different techniques. So if one doesn't work, the others will. And uh, so it doesn't matter what version of Premiere you're using. All right, let's get started. Very first thing we need to do is make a brand new sequence file. New sequence. And I'm doing a 1080p 30 timeline. Okay, that's fine. All right, so let's drag some Shutterstock in here. And no, I am not sponsored by Shutterstock. I get this question all the time. Um, I license the footage from their site just like you would. I just happen to really like their footage and their business model. Okay, so um, here's your clip, right? And uh, we get these questions all the time. How would you start this process of, of putting a shape or a shape into the video or vice versa? Well, first and foremost, you're always pushing the video into a shape, right? If you think of a Play-Doh extruder, right? You've got the Play-Doh, which is the video, and the extruder, which is the mat. The hole is the only thing allowing the, the video to go through, right? So uh, anything that's not the hole of the Play-Doh extruder would, would, not, would be negative space. Anything that is the hole of the Play-Doh extruder would be your mat. That's the easiest way to explain how track matting works, and for whatever reason, people get very confused. So anyway, um, we get this message a lot. Hey, I added a, a crop to my video, and I can't do anything with it. Is this the right way to do things? The answer is no, but I'll show you real quick. Highlight this layer, go under effects, go to your search window and type crop. It's also found under video effects, transform crop. Drag it over here, like so. And then just go over here and just tweak the footage, right? Just like you would. So I'm gonna pull in the left, I'm gonna pull in the right. It doesn't really matter, like that's cool. I'll pull a little off the top and the bottom. And cool, I've got myself a box. That's great. Um, but what if my client's like, look, I want the box to be over here or I want it to be over here and I want to show whatever it is over here. I want to not show this particular thing. How do I move that? So you're like, oh, I'll just move the video, right? Nope. Er, sorry. Once your video is, uh, once it's cropped, you can't move the video behind it. So the best thing to do here is to go ahead and remove the crop like so. Make sure your, your video is 960 by 540 if you're working in 1080, right? And let's just not alter the clip itself ever again. Let's just start looking at the clip as the clip and we'll make the mat separate. That's the, probably the better workflow, right? Cool. So how do I do that? File, new, color mat. It doesn't matter. Uh, this information here doesn't matter. It's all good. And the color doesn't matter either. I'm just going to pick white and we'll hit OK. And now I've got a color mat. And you're like, hey, where's the mat? You have to go over here to project and it will be right here in your project window. Drag it over to your timeline and I'm just gonna cinch it up to fill the whole clip and like that. Now we have ourselves a white color mat over the stock footage, right? So what do I do? Well, let's go back to what we did before, go under effects and look for crop. It might still be in your search window. If it's not, type in crop. You can also, like I said before, go under video effects, transform crop, drag it over. Drag the crop to the color mat, not to your video, like so. And let's just start cinching it up like we did before. Like, <laughs> Pull it out a little off. I'm gonna make a rectangle this time because I can. And then we'll just like so, right? And cool, we have ourselves a box. Well, how do I get this video inside this box? Remember the Play-Doh extruder. I wanna push this through this. How do I do that? Let's go back over to our effects window here. Close out the search and in the search type in track. And under video effects keying track matte key right here. Drag that over and drag that to your footage, not to your mat. This question comes on YouTube all the time. Hey, I did exactly what you said and it doesn't work. No, no. You always put the key on the video itself that's going to reference the mat. So you drag your track mat key, drag it onto your footage like so, and it will be over here in your effects controls. If you don't see your effects controls, hit Shift-5 and it will open it up, and you're gonna look for a track mat key. And it's only got two options, really. 
three if you want to include the reverse mat, but I don't. All right, so uh, under mat, it says none. So let's find out where is our mat. Go back to our timeline, do 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 do. Uh, videos on one, so mat is on two. So go over here to mat and change it from none to two or Jackie. Ah, and we have uh, composite using alpha or luma. In this case, either would work because I made it white for luma, but it also has an alpha channel because it's cropped. See, alpha. And so I'll just use the alpha channel. And you're like, well, wait a second, hold on. I, nobody is on the planet is going to want this shot, so how do I move it? Just highlight the thing and move it again, right? Er, nope, just like the crop. Once this is, uh, once the track mat is married to the clip, it stays like this. So what do I do? You, you lied to me, Sean. You lied to me. No, no, no. I didn't undo. All right, I just reset this real quick so it's back to where we had it originally. Let's go ahead and go back to our clip here. Highlight track mat key and delete. Boom. And go back to our stock footage here. Right click on it and find nest. All right, go ahead and hit OK. Now go back to your effects window and apply your track, your track mat key. Once again, track mat key. Our mat is still on layer two, so we go like this and mat alpha. Now I can move this footage, right? All I have to do is just double click on the nested sequence to get me to this timeline and I can reposition. So I pull this footage down like so. And I go back to my timeline. Ah, now her eyes are in the shot. Oh, I see. Okay. Now we're cooking with gas. I understand. So if I, again, if I pull this way back up here and move over to sequence 11, I've got the world's most awesome shot. Woo! Boy, would my client be happy. Upload that to the collaborator and see what they have to say. What? No. So let's go ahead and just pull this back down so it makes some kind of sense like that. And we're back in. All right, cool. But now you're probably like, Sean, you told me how to make animated mats. This is a box. You're a liar. No, I'm not lying. We're almost there. And wow, you're vicious. I like it. All right, so highlight your color mat right here and make sure you're at your very first frame. You can grab your CTI and drag it all the way and slam it in there. You can also type it in here, whatever you want to do. Make sure you're at your very first frame. And with your color mat highlighted, hit Shift-5 to get you over to the effects controls. And over here, right here where it's crop, right? We, want, we like our shape, right? So let's figure out what we want to do. Well, I kind of want to have this shape animate on where it is. So I could do a couple things. I can animate top, like, right? I can animate the bottom. I can also do left or right, you know? So what do I want to do? Well, hmm. I think I'm just going to do either top or bottom, right? So let's go ahead and just make a keyframe. Uh, we're going to come back to it, but let's just go ahead and animate top. Who cares, right? Go ahead oh, right here, click on your stopwatch, and you've made a keyframe. Now let's go to one second, like so, and go ahead and click here, which will add a keyframe. Now you didn't have to, you could have started on this frame and make a keyframe, but I kind of like to animate backwards sometimes or forwards. It doesn't really matter. I just made this a, a placeholder so I can always go back and uh, go back to my first keyframe. I don't always animate on the very first frame, so sometimes I make a keyframe so I can go back to it, right? Just showing you how to do that. And then just uh, go, go to your very first keyframe, like I said before, just change whatever value you made top to 100, and now you've got an empty mat, right? So you've got negative space, no mat, and if you hit play, cool, all right. So now we have the basis of our uh, animated mat. And of course, you could have used a wipe or some kind of other transition to get the same exact thing, but it, the functionality is already built into the crop and you're using crop, so why not just stay with crop, right? So a couple problems. One, when it's done animating, boom, hits that brick wall, hate it. So let's go ahead and click on this clip right here, on this uh, keyframe right here, right click on it and go to ease in, right? And then roll it back. Ah, much nicer, all right. That solves one issue, right? But I showed you multiple boxes. So how do I do that? How do I get a second animation in here, right? How do I get something else? Well, let's go over here to project and let's grab a different piece of footage. Let's see. That one will work just fine and put it right on top, right? And just like you did before, let's go ahead and make a color mat. Now you could drag option drag this one straight up and have another mat, right? And so you're going to have this mat here, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Go under, hit Shift-5 for effects controls, highlight your motion positional information, and then just move it up, right? And let's go ahead and we have a uniform scale. We'll turn that off and we'll scale the width, or we'll scale the height a little bit and the width in a little bit. So we'll make it slightly different than it was before. So now you've got two colored mats. You can't see them right now, but the animation's also the same. So we'll tweak that in a second. With this Shutterstock clip, uh, 
highlighted, you could do a track mat, right? But again, I want ultimate repositionable, repositionable, well, that's not a word at all. I want ultimate reposition control over this footage. So once again, right click, hit nest, make it a nested comp, and then go over to your effects controls, find your track mat key. You can always type in track here if it's not there and drag it over to the nested sequence right here, like show. And once again, you have to just answer a few simple questions. Where is your mat? Well, this is video layer three, so the mat is on four, and so I pick four, and again, alpha. So now if I roll it back, I have two animated boxes, slightly different shape, but with the same exact animation and the same exact timing. This is not okay. Uh, for me, I would just uh, quickly offset this because I don't, I like, I don't like things to be uh, uniform. It drives me crazy. So let's go ahead and highlight our top color mat right here and go here to our last keyframe, our, our finished keyframe. And let's go ahead and we're not going to animate using the top at all. So let's go ahead and turn off that stopwatch like so. And let's find something else to animate. Let's just do bottom, right? So we'll highlight bottom and then we'll go to the very first keyframe again. And we'll just start tweaking this, right? So we'll turn that to, I don't know, 58. Yeah, just basically animate it until it closes. And then once again, because I hate linear keyframes, I'm going to grab the last keyframe and ease in. And I, I was asked this a lot. A lot of people are like, why don't you ease in on the first keyframe and ease out on the last? I think it's more because you're thinking of an in and an out keyframe. But when in reality, it's the other way around. You're leaving this keyframe, so you want to ease out of it. And you're entering this keyframe, so you want to ease into it. So just a little bonus tip there. Ah, okay, cool. So I play it back, and yeah, that's interesting. I think the timing's a little slow, but you get what I, you get my point. And of course, when you want to alter the timing, you can do a couple things. You can just grab um, the, any of the keyframes and just move them around. So if you want it uh, to last longer, you drag it out, like ooh, really long. Or if you want it to take shorter, uh, less amount of time, you just pull it in, right? So like so. Yeah. Cool. All right. So now we we have a basis of. Uh, animated boxes, right? We, we have our, this is it. This is how you animate boxes in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, that's not necessarily the, the sexiest uh, of, of situations for your video, but before you poo-poo boxes all, all together, you can really have a lot of fun and figure, and you know, just come up with creative uses. Like, uh, for example, if I go ahead to this project window and I grab this uh, color mat here, just drag it over to a brand new piece of, of space here and highlight it and then go to effects and I'll type crop like so, and bring the crop over. And then over here in the effects control windows, I just kind of cinch this, this one up like that and pull it, this over here like so, and then pull this up and pull this down and it's probably a little too thick. There we go, that's pretty good. And you do this, right? And then you do duplicate that and you move this over like so, and then I do one more, pull that up. And I pull that back and I make this one somewhere in the middle, but this one at the bottom is going to be like that. So if you have a company with an M in it, uh, this is a quick way of putting some video inside their M. Obviously you could rotate this and make it a W or an E or whatever, but this is just, you know, there, there's, there's no shame in animating boxes, especially if you're going to do something cool with it, right? So if I wanted three different uh, pieces of video, I would isolate these separately, right? Just like I showed you over here. But if I wanted this all as one shape, I could simply just highlight them all, right click, nest them, hit okay, go back to my project window, bring in some footage like so, more tracky, and then go under effects, track, Type in track, just like before, and put it on the footage. And remember, I said I would not typically put this on footage, but I'm just showing this as an example. Find my mat, which is layer three, what jacky? And there you go. So as soon as the mat picks up, it's like, boom, right? So you can always cinch your mat up like that. So it starts at the very first frame, and there you go. So you could have all kinds of things like including a logo, and I'm gonna show you that in a second, but you absolutely can have fun with boxes. Okay, that's method one. Blah, blah, shake it off. Ah, that was great. Let's try method two. All right. File, new sequence. I just like putting things in new sequences. I'm crazy like that. Hit OK. All right. So the next method is masking opacity, right? So if you're using a relatively new version of, of Premiere, you have a lot of great masking options available to you. So let's go ahead and just start off with some footage like we always have. Boom. And like I told you before, I'm just going to nest this right off the bat because that's what I do. And let's zoom in like that. Okay, so now we've got our nested video, no big deal. 
let's do some masked opacity this time. Let's make our own custom shapes, people. All right, so I can make a new color mat, or I can just use the one that's already there. So I'm just gonna use that one, drag it over, cinch it across, like so, and highlight this. And you have masks available in a bunch of different places. You could bring in a crop again, but why bother? You have right here under effects controls, hit shift five. You have masking abilities, right? You can do a free draw Bezier tool, which is fun in Premiere. You can also do a, a box. You can also do an ellipse, right? So let's just do an ellipse real quick, right? And you got this funky tool here. Uh, first and foremost, it comes, I'm just gonna click off of it. It comes naturally as a feathered mat. If you like that, that's cool, I do not. So I'm going to kill the feather right off the bat. <laughs> Cool, and now we have a nice sharp ellipse. Now, of course, you can expand it using this tool here, or you can click on it right here, and you can start manipulating it. So that's your feather out. This is, this one here would be your, uh, right here would be your, would be your uh, expansion in, like so. See, so you can do some really cool stuff, and you can animate that. So it's like, like so, all right? And let's see, you can also Tweak it any way you like. And this is all animatable, right? So let's just figure out a shape that we're happy with. And I'm just gonna do something like that, right? Something like that, maybe like this. Really not that important here. Okay, so now I've got this funky shape, right? And I'm gonna wanna push this video through like we've always talked about, but first I'm gonna, uh, let's see, we're gonna, yeah. Let's go ahead and at one second, go to one second in time here. So I'll change, highlight that, highlight one like this, we checky at zero. And at one second, go ahead and highlight your mask expansion and make a stopwatch, click there, go back to your very first frame and just tweak this until you get something that you're interested in, right? I um, think that's cool. And of course, remember, I hate linear keyframes with a passion, so I'm gonna highlight this last one, right click on it and ease in, okay. So rolling back, you've got something like that. Cool, right? Little long and not really exciting. So let's go back to this second keyframe here, like so. And then just in a few, just go over a few frames, like three or four frames by hitting the right arrow. One, two, three, four, let's call it four. And let's just drive this back down just a little bit, right? So we'll roll it back and it should be, a that's pretty cool, but it has that weird bump because I already have this keyframe uh, Bezier. So let's change Bezier to continuous Bezier, right? And see what happens there. It's not bad. Let's do auto Bezier. That's probably better. That's cool. Now this is just taking too long. So I'm just gonna cinch it in. That's what I'm looking for. So it's bloop, like, you know, like, pop up video, bloop, you know. All right, so go ahead and grab your nested sequence like so, and go ahead to your effects window, type in track, T-R-A-C-K, bring over track mat key, drag it to your nested sequence, not to your mat, and then over in your track mat key, remember shift five if you don't have your effects uh, controls open, and pick your mat here. Our mat is on video layer two, so we do like this, like so, and bloop, nice. Bloop, bloop, very cool, right? But what if I want this to have a bunch of other little ones, right? I don't wanna do one, well, not a problem. I've already showed you this, so we'll go ahead and just option click this color mat and bring it up two layers to video layer four, and we'll bring in some more footage here. So we used uh, the other clips, so we'll bring in and use this one. So we're tracky. Again, I'm going to nest it because if I want to repo it, I got to nest it. Go ahead and highlight nested sequence nine. Go over to your effects window. Type in track in your search. If it's already open, just go ahead and grab it. Remember, it's also on video effects keying track mat key. Drag it to your video, not to your mat. So like so. And then go ahead and hit shift five to open up effects controls. And under your track mat key, just like all the other times, tell it where your mat happens to be and so on and so forth. Cool. So. That's great, but now it's sitting on top of that one. So what do I do? Well, we need to repo and shift O and all kinds of stuff. So let's go ahead and just start repositioning the thing first and scale it down, right? So like so, all right, that's pretty cool. Maybe scale it a little bit smaller like that, right? So now it's gonna be like bloop, bloop. Well, it's still too slow, right? And bloop, really not all that exciting. So let's go ahead and Grab these two layers and just offset them a little bit, just a couple frames, so it's like bloop, bloop, like that, right? And then it's, let's go ahead and highlight our color mat, and let's bring these keyframes in a little closer. So this one, the small one's really fast. It'll be like bloop. So it's like, this is cool. And maybe we want it to happen the other way. Maybe the big one is the final reveal, right? So maybe you've got a bunch of little ones. So just grab the little one and shift it over, bloop, 
See, that's pretty cool. All right. Here's another time for another one of those famous bonus questions that we've always been asked, and I'm gonna throw this out at you. <laughs> we get asked this all the time when we're doing style mats, track mats, mat transitions, anything with a mat, they're like, well, how do I change the background color? Well, I'm gonna tell you, tell you this like I just told you with the Play-Doh extruder. This right here is not your background. This is negative space. There is no background color, okay? There is, there's nothing there. This is just video matted. So what's inside the video is positive. What's outside the video is negative. There's nothing here. This is not technically a black background. So what do I do? Well, you, if you're gonna want to change your background or put video back there or, or just put a pattern back here, if you're gonna wanna do that, you're gonna always wanna leave yourself an extra uh, space uh, in your timeline. It has to be beneath everything. And whoops, we're on video layer one. So what we're gonna do is gonna highlight all these and pull them up, which the second you do, it's gonna break everything. Why? because you told every single piece of video that the mat lives on a certain channel. Now these certain channels don't have mats on them and this is the end result. So when you move things like that, stop before you do anything else, highlight your video and go ahead where it says mat and tell it where the mat is. So the bottom layer right here is on video two, so the mat is on layer three. Boom, ha ha. And then we'll go ahead to our nested sequence again, highlight uh, video layer four, and again our color mat is on video layer five for that layer now, and boom, voila. All right, so it's like bloop bloop. Cool. And remember, like I told you before, I'm not happy with uh, with one quarter of one person's face. I don't know if a client would ever pay you for that. So let's go ahead and double click on nested sequence nine, highlight the Shutterstock video, and just kind of move it over. And if you want to fit more in, let's just go ahead and shrink it down. Move it over, designers. It's pretty good. All right. And then go over to sequence 12. And ooh, that was a pretty good guess there. Cool. And of course, now that you've got your timing, we, like just like we talked about a second ago, you want to put something back here, right? So uh, you can literally put anything back there that you want. So I'll just go ahead and I'll grab a color mat like we did before, put it down on video layer one and cinch it up. And of course, it was white, so we can double click on it though. No problem. And we can make it anything you want. Red, right? All right, double click on it. Blue, you know, whatever. This can be video. You could get rid of that and you could put video underneath it. That would be strange. I wouldn't, I don't recommend that. It's really hard to see because you've got her circle there, but you know you can put any kind of video on it. So let me just go ahead and uh, blow that up so you can see that it, you know, it was very similar. But you can put anything back there. You can uh, put a texture, a background, a still frame, anything you want. All right. So now you've got the concept of using pre-made shapes. Uh, with your opacity, but what if you want to make your own custom shape? You're like, Sean, I must control everything. Okay, that's cool. I'm down. So let's go ahead and go under File, New Sequence, start another timeline, make everything clean, you know, putting one idea on a timeline. All right, so what do we do? Start off with our footage, like so. Cinch it up so we can see it. And I'm just going to go ahead and right click and nest it. All right. So again, color mat, drag it over, cinch it across the clip. Brrr. And go over here to opacity, right? And there's this really funky looking pen tool. I'll go ahead and just zoom out here so you can see the magic of this so-called pen tool. All right, so you've got this and you click it and it says mask one, right? And then you get this funky pen here, right? And you can just go to town. You can click and drag. If you drag, you'll get Bezier handles. If you just click, you'll get really sharp end angles, right? It's like pretty much like any pen tool out there. It's a little primitive for masking. Obviously, After Effects masks or Mocha masks or pretty much any other masks are better. But if you need to do a quick dirty masks in uh, this software, you can. Now, I'm going to make a better shape. But again, you can highlight it. Effects, track matte key, matte alpha, layer two. And now you've got this footage in what is quite possibly the ugliest shape ever created ever in the history of video, right? But you can still do your own custom shapes. Let's go ahead and kill this mask though because it's making me sad. So highlight the color mat and highlight that mask and delete it. Let's make something more interesting. Highlight your Bezier tool and this allows you to get funky, right? So you just go like this and you can do like maybe a slice. Booyah, like that, right? And so now you've got this cool slice and then you want to animate that slice, right? Well, it's like, well, what do you do? You can expand it. You can animate the expansion like we saw before, which will give you you know, this cool thing, and you can expand it fully. You can go negative and positive with your expansion. What else could you do? Well, you could animate the position, like so, like, you know. Um, you can animate the scale, you know. So what, what do you want to do here? Well, I think that I'm going to use some kind of a transition. Maybe I don't want to do the animation by hand. Maybe I want the software to help me out just a little bit, right? So let's go over here to our effects windows and twirl down video effects like so 
and let's look for, I don't know, let's look for transitions here. Twirl that down. I'm going to go ahead and I'll use a linear wipe. So let's go ahead and put that on top of our track mat right there. And highlight linear wipe. And let's go ahead and just, oh, that's neat. You can just move the transition completion. That's pretty cool. So it looks like the box is growing. Well, let's try that, right? So our very first keyframe, let's make sure we're at frame zero or frame the very first frame of your animation. And make sure your transition completion is at 100% and turn on your stopwatch and then go to one second. Do -do 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 like so, and change that to zero. And again, my devout hatred for linear keyframes. Right click, easy, ease in, and you have this. Pretty cool, right? So now you're getting the basis of how to animate your own, your own mats. You can use anything that offers animation that will generate shapes. Linear wipes are great, so you don't have to mask or animate that. You know, there's a lot of things you can do, right? So that's method two, it's masking opacity. Method three is even cooler. Now, now that you see how this works, anything, and I mean anything, can be a mat. So what do we do? Well, let's bring in some shapes from the internet, right? Okay, cool. I already, already found some shapes on the good old interwebs, and I brought those in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab them. I brought two here from the interwebs, one called Arrow white transparent and the other one called arrow white no transparency and I'll show you what's up with all that so let's go ahead and delete this color mat here on our nested sequence and we'll go ahead and delete the track mat key um, another quick bonus someone told me that my tutorials are way too fast I, and then I'm also told that they take too long so what I try to do is show you the same technique over and over and over and over again and hopefully by the end uh, it sticks so while I might be going too fast for example one by the time you get to example 20 or whatever it, sink, it sinks in all right, so I brought these, uh, I got these images off the interwebs, right? Harmless enough, they're PNG files, they're cool little shapes. One has an alpha channel built in. Uh, it's a PNG file, so if I just drag some footage underneath, you can see, hey, look, well, it's got a built-in alpha channel, right? This one does not. This one is a file this size, that's the, the native file size, and it's just the arrows over black. Either will work, and I'm gonna show you how. All right, so let's say you've got these, these cool little arrow things, right? Let's go ahead and let's just quickly animate them. We'll go ahead and we'll just call this our very first frame. And we're at, so it's at 10.05, so let's just go to 11.05 here. So one second in, like so, right? And we'll go ahead and go over here. Highlight your arrows, go to Shift-5 to get your effects controls. Highlight your positional keyframe, like so. And then just go back to your first frame and just drag your arrows outside of the frame and again, right click on your last keyframe and go to ease in. All right, super slow, but you get it, right? I, I don't tend to animate this slow in life, but it's all good, right? So that's cool, you've made an animation, but it's not a track mat, so go ahead and highlight shutter stock, go to effects, type in track mat, right, like so, and then bring this all the way over here to your footage and declare where your mat is. Uh, my footage is on layer one, but my mat here is on layer three. Always know where your mats are. So it's a layer three, so I'll switch my blend mode, or excuse me, I'll switch my track mat key to video layer three. And it's set to alpha by default, and now you have footage inside animated arrows. Very cool. All right, so what happens if my footage, like you showed me, doesn't have an alpha channel? Like if I scroll over here, and it's like, oh, what's this? Well, here's the situation on this thing. This is the mat line for this element, right? The element looks like this, but it comes in a box. Every, fra every file that you bring in has a frame size. This is the frame size of that box. It's not larger than our video, but, it, but it's seeing the alpha channel, right? Because the alpha channel is just the box. There's no additional transparency information. So how do I use that if I don't have a mat? Well, no problem. Go back to your Shutterstock clip, hit Shift-5 to open up effects controls, and this is what I was talking about before. Under composite using, it defaults to alpha. We get told all the time, well, if this doesn't have an alpha channel, I can't use it. That's entirely not true. Go ahead and switch from matte alpha to matte luma, right? And boom. Because remember, these are this, these, this file is white on black. So whatever's white here, whatever's 100% white, uh, will, will show 100% through. And whatever's black will not show any video, right? Anything in between black and white will have a, a percentage of transparency, right? So now you start getting into like our matte transitions and things where you're introducing, you know, gradients and, you know, 25% opacity and 50% opacity and grays and, and things like that. But for now, just look at it this way. In this particular universe, everything is black and white. <laughs> 
black for the negative space, white for the positive space. So as long as you switch this to Luma, you'll be okay. So if you go ahead and click on your uh, Shutterstock clip, Shift-5 to Effects Controls, and you're set to Luma, saying that I want luminance values versus an alpha channel. It's that simple. So if, am I using something that's black and white or grayscale? Cool. Am I using something with a built-in alpha channel? Really, really simple, okay? So you're thinking, well, Sean, if you can bring in anything from the internet, what does that mean to me? Well, good question. That means that you can animate your logo, right? Oh, so right here, I've got the rampant logo. It's pretty good, right? But I want to put footage in it. So what do I do? Well, just like you did before. Just go ahead and drag some footage, put it underneath, like so, we're tracky. And now you've got our rampant R right here in front of these girls. I'm just going to go ahead and scale it up a little bit like that. And we're going to go ahead, because it has a natural um, alpha channel, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight Shutterstock and go under Effects, track matte key, like so. Wouldn't that be a great island to live on? I live on track mat key. Sorry, bad, uh, bad uh, Caribbean humor. All right, so uh, your, your, stock, your, sh your shutter stock needs to be pushed through your logo. Super simple. Go ahead and find out what layer your logo is on. Mine is on uh, video layer three. So I'll go ahead and tell my mat video three, and boom, I now have my footage inside my logo. A lot of people like to see that. They want to see stuff inside their logo, right? And of course, you can do the exact same thing that I showed you last time. Find yourself some kind of an animation point. So this starts at 2219. So I'll go to 2319, just one second later. I'm going to highlight my, uh, my, uh, my mat here and click on scale, like so. And then go back to my very first frame, like so. And I'm going to make that a zero. And then I'll right click my last keyframe because I hate linear keyframes and change it to easy in. And see? Real, real simple. You can also do it with text. You can do it with anything. Anything can be a mat. I'll show you. That's really, that's really the end of our method three and method four is really just hammering home that anything can be a mat, right? So let's go file, new title. Remember, all it needs is luminance values or an alpha channel and it can be your mat. So we're gonna call this title one, boom. And we'll just go ahead and we'll type a title in here. I'm gonna go whammy, right? And we will make this title super, super big, like so. And I'm just going to pick my favorite font right now. Although I'm using it so much, I'm probably going to get sick of it. You ever do that with music or anything? You watch it or listen to it so much that you're just done with it? All right. So I'll go ahead and cinch that up like that. Whammy. Okay. And again, I've got a title. So let's scroll over here to make some space. Drag our shutter stock over here, and again, I'm going to right click and nest it. It's just a good way to, a good workflow. And I'll bring our title over here, whammy, right? So now I've got whammy over video, you see that all the time. Highlight your nested sequence, go over to your effects, type in track for track mat key, boom, boom, boom. Bring that over, put it on your nested sequence or your video. Don't ever put it on your mat, always put it on your video, like so. Highlight track mat key, shift five if it's not open in your effects controls, and declare where your mat lives. This mat right here, right, it lives on video layer two. So, doo -doo -doo. Ba boom. And now you've got video inside of text. What? And of course, because I uh, nested it, I can reposition it because we want that inside the text. Boom. Whammy. So, literally anything can be a mat, right? So then it's just a function of animation and becoming creative, right? That uh, brings me to a, a, another point. I wanna show you uh, method five or four and a half or whatever is like, remember I told you, you can find things on the internet, right? Well, if you go to 4kfree.com, it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a thing. If you go to 4kfree.com, and I'll show you right here in, in the Googs, you go to 4kfree.com, you sign up, you put your name, blah, you put your, uh, your email address, blah, you hit click here to download, it will take you right here. You're gonna get a nice little hug from Stephanie and myself. And then you scroll all the way down. There's all kinds of free goodness here, but keep scrolling, keep scrolling. I mean, literally, this is all free stuff, yo. If, you don't, if you're not a part of 4kfree.com, I, I don't know what to tell, to tell you. You can use this in your personal project, professional projects. They aren't watermarked, they're 100% free. Uh, so just keep scrolling down, do, 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 Animated mats. And right here, you'll see studio mats. Those are, those are the mats that I designed. I designed style mats. So you have two options. You can click here to download our free effects. Absolutely free. Once you click it, it downloads. It's like, so it's like boop, see, download. And then see, because these mats are small, that was it. All right, or you can click right here and it will take you to the project page, the product page, right? So it's like, 
And you can learn more about the mats that I've designed. Now that you see how you design mats, you can absolutely check them out and, uh, and see, you know, see what you like yourself. But you can see all kinds of different designs. I've, I've designed so many. So anyway, let's go ahead, go back into Premiere. And in 4K free for the mats, you get yourself a handful of free mats from my library. And they're all kinds of cool and crazy. So if I just drag this over here, and these are 4K. These are 4K mats that are free, right? So now you've got even more room and, and more ability to play. So let's go ahead and just option click this nested sequence one time. And just go ahead and go under effects. Make sure the track mat key is on. It is. Go ahead and highlight that. Shift 5 to open up the effects controls. And you want to make sure that your mat is set to Luma because these particular files uh, for the free ones don't have an alpha channel. So go to set Luma and boom, right? Now, of course, you have this hard edge. Why? Because in my nested sequence, I pulled her footage down. So click on that and then repo. The quickest way to repo is to hit reset parameter like that. Go back to your timeline and boom, I have myself animated mats. Sweet. And of course, because it's 4K and massive, I can scale it way, way down. All kinds of room to play, right? And of course, I have a, ton, a tutorial on how to use our mats. Uh, you know, you can uh, isolate them and put different kinds of footage in here, but you, you get the concept now. So now you understand how to make your own mats. And of course, there's tons of free uh, resources available. Like I said, if you go to 4kfree.com, you've got all kinds of mats to choose from. Um, they're, they're huge too, by the way. So I'm just going to go 25. I made these in 4K, or actually they're in 5K. So that one's a fun one. This one you see all the time, uh, you know. So just different kinds of shapes for you to use to instantly stylize your footage. And of course, they have an intro and an outro. And uh, they're free, 100% free. So go to 4kfree.com and you can load yourself up on that. So that is it. That, that is 100% it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, the last thing I want to say is if you really, uh, if you, if you, now that you have an appreciation for this, but you just don't have time, if you don't have the resources or you just don't want to do it, that's totally cool. Go ahead and go to stylemats.com. That's style, S-T-Y-L-E, mats, M-A-T-T-E-S.com. And that will take you to the page that I just showed you a second ago. It'll take you to this page right here, right? And we have things, uh, we have mats in 2K, 4K, and 5K. You can watch the promo video. You can see all kinds of stuff, but it comes with 407 animated mats in 2K, 4K, or 5K, and they come with alpha channels. It's really just up to you. Uh, if you want to do it on your, on your own, you want to use ours, that's great. There's all kinds of different styles. And these are the ones that uh, I told you about. You see these exact ones, not something similar, but these exact ones on America's Got Talent, on Project One Way, and so on and so forth. And if you want to just see what every single clip has to offer in this particular volume, go ahead and right here. A lot of people don't know about this, and I guess I, I, we, Stephanie and I haven't done a great job of telling people about this, but we have an iOS app. Uh, it's absolutely free. Go to rampantpreviewer.com or click here uh, on, the, on any of our product pages and it will take you to the Previewer app and you can watch every single mat that I hand animated or anything else that we've shot or created for our library. So, and because you're awesome, right? And because you're just amazing and you sat here and listened to my, my nonsense for however long this was, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna offer you 20% discount on these studio mats. If you wanna buy them and uh, they're just not, uh, it's just, the process is just not for you, I'm gonna go ahead and give you 20% discount right now. Just go ahead and go to the shopping cart and hit, put in Run Rampant, R-U-N-R-A-M-P-A-N-T, um, and uh, into the coupon code and it will save you 20%. So thank you so much for everything. We uh, love and adore you all. Please like, comment, and share. And of course, please, please, please subscribe. Uh, we run on love here and, um, well, uh, no love, and we can't keep making tutorials. That's a frowny face. So let's go ahead and be happy, be positive, and thank you so much for everything. And of course, if you have any t uh, comments or tutorial requests, please leave them in the bottom. We get tutorial requests every single day, and they go into a list, and we will try to get our, uh, one of our, our tutorial artists to make uh, every single tutorial that you all request. So anyway, thanks again so much for your time. I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com. Thanks for watching.